can feel you all around me Thickening the air I'm breathing Holding on to what I'm feeling That shit is hard, oh my god Hey I have a rogue contact that's definitely gonna pop out of my eye Some point filming this, so It bees like that, what can I say? Hi, it's Kendall here If you're new around here, welcome If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday If you don't know what Saturday is Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat This series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week we looked at a modern instant classic when we looked at M. Night Shyamalan's, Shyamalan's newest release, Old. Just camp of the greatest candor. Uh, in all seriousness, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> awful. Just, I loved it. But if you haven't checked out that video, feel free to check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. This week is another highly requested movie. Addison Rae's new movie. She's the lead in a gender bent remake of the 1990s popular rom-com by the name of She's All That, aptly called He's all that. But the moment I was flooded with these requests, my first response was, who? I am very well aware that I'm not in the age demographic of Addison Rae, so I have no idea who that was. But apparently, after a quick Google search, Addison Rae is a TikTok dancer, influencer, alleged Trump supporter, which, hey, it was the first article that came up when I first started looking, so. You ask her about that. Oh, and musician apparently. And then I was reminded when I saw her, oh, I actually am not completely new to Addison Rae. I had seen her music video that came out several months ago. And when it came out, it was trending on Twitter. So I was just like, oh, what's this? And um, wasn't a fan, didn't like it. It was really like whoever wrote the song never met with the person that choreographed the video. Her choreography was like weirdly intense for this like, very lackluster song. I don't know, it was just very weird and mad incoherent. <laughs> Looked like something crumping to Mozart. Now, apparently she's taken a stab at acting. And if I'm not mistaken, this is her acting debut with again, a 2021 reimagining, so to speak, of the late 90s classic, She's All That. As a person that doesn't know who Addison Rae is, and certainly doesn't know her well enough to have a strong opinion on her. And also a person that didn't really grow up with She's All That. Like I had seen it maybe twice, one and a half times. <laughs> if they ended up, you know, fudging this up and ruining the memory and the nostalgia or whatever, I wouldn't care because I didn't like the movie anyway. Not that I disliked it, but I wasn't super impassioned about it. So I just feel like I'm the perfect person to watch this movie. I don't give a fuck about Addison Rae and I don't give a fuck about She's All That. So I feel like I can give probably the most uh, neutral review of this movie than say other people who are very familiar with either of them. So with that said, I went into the movie knowing it's not gonna be great. It's a Netflix reimagining of anything. It's gonna be, you know, what Netflix does. With that said, I can go on record and say that he's all that is a wholly forgettable experience. <laughs> but not enough so that it would incite any form of like vitriol in me. To be honest with you, this movie was just like remarkably unremarkable. <laughs> to be honest with you, I feel like a lot of people like over exaggerate how bad the movie is. It's a, again, it's a very much so, oh, I saw that. I don't ever have to see it again. <laughs> the only thing that did incite uh, any form of passion for me were how I feel like everybody in this movie is deeply unlikable, but especially the people that y'all want me to like the most. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Without further ado, this is He's All That. So my first reaction to starting this movie was elation actually, because I realized that it was an hour and a half. At this point, I'm just primed to expect that some form of Netflix teen focused media will be weirdly long. I was thinking this was gonna be like another kissing booth situation where you go in there thinking, there's no way this movie could be over an hour and 20 minutes and you sit there and it's two hours. So our movie's main character is Paget which is a name, I, I kinda, it's kinda ugly, but I like it. Uh, played, of course, by Addison. <laughs> Did I call her Addison Kane before? The Omegaverse author? <laughs> Don't ask why I know that. I'll, I'll just, I gotta defend myself. <laughs> the reason I know that is because I've seen that Lindsay Ellis video on the Omegaverse. 
It's one of my comfort videos. I come back to it like every two months. I refuse to feel embarrassed. I've said worse on Twitter. Anyway, Addison Ray is her name. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she plays Paget, and Paget is an influencer, which I found was ballsy. A makeover influencer specifically. And she spends her mornings waking up a little extra early so that she can put makeup on, so that she can go on a live stream and then act like she's waking up for the first time and how she needs to now put her makeup on. I feel like every vlog person has to have an element of suspended reality. Yes, I turned the camera on to record me waking up right now. Granted, I've never really done the makeup thing because that just sounds like a lot of work, but um, the camera thing, definitely been there, definitely done that. Does like her morning routine. Morning routine, side note are funny as hell to me because you know you don't do that you know you don't wake up at 4 30 and go like make your own kombucha in your backyard and then pick your own oranges for your orange juice and your dog don't shed and nobody gets cramps like that shit is hilarious but she spends her mornings talking to her followers showing them how she gets ready for the day giant zit and they're taking her senior pictures in two days a little toothpaste dries it right out skincare twitter gonna be mad where's the retinol aha baja zinc for me Minted rice water. She goes downstairs to greet her mom, who it took me way too long to realize is actually the female lead in the first She's All That. And girl, she aged good. That's minding your own business, dude. And I was looking at her, I was like, well, they look like they're the same age. Which, by the way, isn't a read to Addison Ray. It's a compliment to old girl. I don't know what her name is. But she is a nurse. Seemingly divorced from the guy of the first uh, movie and they stay in a house, but they can barely afford it But she's able to make at least enough so that they can stay in a school district. That's really good for Paget. and Paget is friends with really rich kids and she's been lying to them all four years of high school saying that she lives in some really ritzy apartment complex every morning she leaves her home goes over to the nicer apartment stands in front of it and waits for her friends to pick her up on the way to school which i thought was funny why did she think that anybody would think that she has a bunch of money what person with a lot of money is carpooling by the way i said that she has friends she doesn't she has one singular friend the other one who i'm just gonna call curly uh is gonna be our nemesis of the movie well there's several but i think she's supposed to be the the big bad of it she has a boyfriend supposed to be some kind of like generic influencer douchebag paul-esque type dude is he wearing teal and black zebra joggers and orange tiger skin sneakers I can't. This is the most ghetto shit I've ever seen in my life. I hope no real animals, I'm sure not. But like, you ever sit there and think about the amount of ugly clothes that animals died for? But more irritating than that, he sings this incredibly annoying and grating song basically every time he appears on screen. <laughs> And I will say it is very effective at making him someone with such a punchable presence. Like I'm waiting the whole movie for somebody to deck him in the mouth. And also, as we've come to expect, that is very much so a grown ass man. Brooding a 25 year old teenager. I'm here all week. Like Addison, I can see we can get away with, but that's a man that's, that that's a junior in college. But hey, if they stop doing this, I'd have to stop singing the song. So go ahead, people. But so one day while going to visit him on set of his annoying music video, Paget goes to give him some pastries that she had made at home and she wanted to record it on a live stream. And while she's there, she ends up realizing that he's cheating on her with a backup dancer. You deserve my crocobus, you crocobus! And now everybody knows because it was on live stream and Curly, who was holding the phone, didn't turn the stream off. Which to me, just proved my suspicions that she was trash because I'm like, how far away is your thumb from the button? During her argument throwing crocum bouche at the crocum douche, she ended up crying and a snot bubble came out of her nose and that now makes her known as Bubble Girl. And so for some reason, the internet is weird. I don't wanna say this wouldn't happen, but theoretically no. She ends up hemorrhaging followers for some reason. If anything, if this made any traction, it would get her more followers, but okay, cool. But she ends up losing a bunch of followers and the boy, Jordan, ends up, you know, getting super popular because, I don't know, he's the man. He cheated on his girlfriend and got caught and it's like, huh. I mean, misogyny has done stupider things, so I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. And as a result of this whole thing going viral, she ends up losing her biggest 
sponsorship from this Kardashian. Which one is this? <laughs> they all bought the same face. Which one is this? Courtney. Yes. Yes. She's like, hey love, you know, you snot and you got cheated on and it's not really on brand for us. Like all of our influencers have nothing but bone dry orifices. And she's like, yeah, maybe you can work with like an antihistamine brand or something. You'll figure it out, love you, bye. I know this is just a movie, but that's so funny to me. Brands be taking their time dropping people and they got sexual assault allegations. They not gonna drop her first. And again, I know this is supposed to be a read, but if I saw an influencer got famous because she had a snotty nose and turned that into a mucinex bag, you won. Now it's time to meet the project of this movie, and that is Cameron. Ugh, just this like higher than thou photographer who doesn't show anybody his pictures, which they gotta remind us over and over again. That's his like whole thing. And he just kind of looked like he smells like a damp basement. Just go up to him with a bottle of ammonia and spray him like a cat. Cameron is so so unlikable. <laughs> Not like the other boys or whatever. Incel fairy tale. Beauty in the incel. Incerella. There we go. I was trying to figure out how to mix those. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, he's the fucking worst. Uh, there are situations where they kind of try to show how he like bucks up against the system, which is like the popular kids. But all they do is just make him look like such a dick. He'll just go up to people unwarranted, unprovoked. Let me put a shirt on, dude. <laughs> and just be an asshole. Dirt bags. And then people respond. You posers call this music? Nigga, get out the frame. Smell like boo-boo and pool water. And I gotta say, I don't understand why they wrote him like this. I don't know if he was supposed to be unlikable and we grow to like him. He's just annoying. <laughs> He's just annoying. If you haven't seen the original movie, She's All That. The entire premise of the movie is that a popular guy in school enters into a bet with a friend of his that he can turn the quote, ugliest girl in school into the prom queen, make her a knockout, make her popular. And this movie is just doing it the other way around. The popular girl is going after the unpopular guy and turning him into prom king. Basically, since Paget was so humiliated by her boyfriend cheating on her and it being all over the internet, she wants to redeem herself by turning the least desirable guy at school into prom king. So that's what she's gonna do. So she enters into a bet with Curly Top and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna turn Cameron into a popular dude. I can do it. And then she'd be able to get her own popularity back. So she goes up to him, basically says, hey, let's be friends. And he's like, what? And he's understandably skeptical because they're seniors now. You haven't talked to me all four years. Why do you wanna talk to me now? Paget decides to get more information about his interests from his little sister. And he has a lot of interests, one of which is going to a local horse stable to help every morning before school. Again, you morning routine people. He wakes up every day before 8.15 in the morning to go to a horse stable to shovel shit willingly. Don't get me wrong, it's not impossible, but all I mean is like when I was in high school, I woke up 20 minutes before class started, brushing my teeth, combing my hair, and getting dressed all while on the toilet. Every morning was chaos. And the idea that there's like morning people still is just like a wild concept to me, but okay, cool. Now armed with this new information, Paget goes to visit him the next morning at the stables. And this scene, I ain't gonna lie, made me almost turn the movie off because this this was this was enough to say, okay, this is the only scene that I feel like is worthy of the vitriol because she goes to see him and he like reluctantly gives her some minor horse riding lessons, basically just teaching her how to get on and off the horse. While descending the horse, she ends up falling in a pile of horse <laughs> She then commences to pick up said horse <laughs> with her bare hands, with her hands and throws it at him. And two people somehow left that stable alive. Not only that, these mother start yucking it up. Oh my God, this is so crazy. And no one died. They just went to school later, inconceivable. But once at school, Paget ends up inviting Cameron and his best friend to a pool party. At said pool party, they're doing some karaoke, which just feels like an excuse for them to get Addison Rae to sing, but okay, cool, whatever. Hey, PR is not the place for pride. While doing her performance of Teenage Dream, her boyfriend actually comes to the party and it distracts her so much that it starts to ruin her performance. So Cameron goes up and saves her the embarrassment by singing with her. 
her. People were recording them singing and it ends up becoming like a new viral video and people were like, oh my God, his voice is kind of good. Oh, who's this guy? Side note, this movie does not believe in subtle ad drops and it's kind of funny. The Pizza Hut is what we're doing. Uh, can I get some KFC to go? Can anyone guess what water brand might have had a hand in the making of this movie? And they end up going to like a train station and end up talking a bit more about serious topics about like their families and their parents, he, he lost his mom, her parents are broken up. And Addison is supposed to look anything but smiley. And I can tell that she doesn't know what to do with her face. And it's, it's pretty bad, it's pretty awful. Especially considering that's when her acting got its worst is during the most sensitive topics. Basically the whole scene is just to tell us, ooh, they're getting closer to each other. There's another party coming up. This time is a themed birthday party for Curly with the theme of quote, drop it like F Scott. It's a great Gatsby themed birthday party, which I gotta say, that sounds fun. Also the name is funny, I like that. And this is when Paget takes the prime opportunity to do a makeover for Cameron for this party, get him dressed up for the theme. They buy him some new clothes, they give him a shower, shave his face, they cut his hair. We find out that he's like weirdly buff like weirdly buff for a person that we've never seen work out in this movie. And at the end of this makeover montage, Cameron's hot. Oh, I finally figured it out. He looks like a great value sprouse. Onward to the party. Cameron's hot, so people don't even recognize him. Patches ex is also at this party. He uh, recently got dumped by the girl that he cheated on her with as she wanted to date a man who played for the Clippers, which is truly embarrassing because the Clippers are terrible, aren't they? They used to be. They, they were notoriously bad. Ignore me, I'm saying that like I know anything about sports. Yay, sports! But she turns him down and then after that, he goes after a literal child. I know like in the movie canonically, they're supposed to be like two years apart. But like, again, that's a grown ass man and that's actually a child. But he tries to make a move on the sophomore off screen. Basically tries to force himself on Cameron's little sister. And she comes back and she's like, he tried to force himself on me. And so Cameron, I guess has to tell us why he is so buff because apparently he's a martial arts expert, which felt very random, but then I looked it up. Apparently he's in Cobra Kai, which is still random because that technically has nothing to do with this movie, but they fight at the end of which, of course, the ex loses. And he's an incredibly sore loser because after which he takes Cameron's camera and throws it into the pool. And apparently the camera's really important because it's his dead mom's camera or something. So he's like, eh. But then again, I thought about it. I'm like, when you was about to get ready to fight, you couldn't hand it to any of the people that was standing around any of the friends that you came with or help put it anywhere but in front of the pool. Or perhaps don't bring an heirloom to a pool party. But Cameron leaves frustrated and confused. Like, why is he even here in the first place? He doesn't belong with all these other kids because he's not like the other boys. Curly cements that she's a crap friend because she goes up to Jordan, the ex, and ends up hooking up with him that night. And basically we learn soon after that all of this stuff was just a very convoluted plan to get Paget off her game so that she can actually run for prom queen against her. Seems like a lot of work when she could have just ran for prom queen as well. I Maybe it's because um, I couldn't imagine anyone caring that much about being prom queen, but two friends like running for prom queen, I don't think would should ruin the friendship, but okay. But they weren't friends anyway, so it's fine. Yup, I'm running for prom queen and I f***ed your ex. <laughs> and also we know you're poor. And she basically says exactly what I thought first. She was like, um, you don't have a car. And then on Cameron's side, the fight at the party actually proved to make him really popular amongst his peers. So now he's nominated for prom king. But now the dilemma of Paget and Cameron starting to really like each other is starting to get in the way. And Paget is like, I can't do this. I have to tell him about the bet. And in the good old switcheroo that we usually do in romantic dramas, right when she's about to tell him like, hey, you know, I have something to tell you. He's like, I too have things to say. <laughs> he basically says like, you're so beautiful. You don't have to hide behind these false things. And then he start aiming for her lashes. I wish a n would come up to me and say, you're so beautiful. Take those off. He start wiping off her lipstick. Just say I look good. The f But I guess she thinks it's cute. Like, oh my God, he sees me for who I really am. And they kiss or whatever. It was very stupid. Next day after school, Curly go tell Cameron about the bet, which <laughs> 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 for 
I want to play, bitch. Flag. You can't sabotage a bet. That's forfeiting. But she's like, yeah, we had a bet that we can make you like not gross and we can make you prom king because you're so undesirable prom has arrived we finally see the principal uh who is matthew leonard i love matthew leonard and for some reason at this prom there's a dance off is there a dance off in the first movie they play this song that's really displaced but actually pretty good it's like a macklemore idris elba moment which is weird that's a weird Okay, he just Elber just be doing shit. he really do. And they finally announced prom king, it's douche nugget. Prom queen is Paget. And of course they have to have the like teen prom queen does a speech about like loving yourself and all that. Mean girls did it better. Uh, but basically she's like, yeah, like social media is fake and like everything isn't perfect all the time. Like, look at this. Like I have snot <laughs> and I wake up in the mornings. She leaves to go find Cameron who rides in on a literal white horse. <laughs> they make up, they graduate and they're together going off into the world as travel vloggers. Sounds fun because they quote lost the bet, which I said my piece. Uh, she has to get a tattoo that says loser, which who's gonna hold her to that? I graduated. I'm never talking to this bitch again. But yeah, they get this tattoo. That's the movie. It's a remarkably unremarkable movie. I <laughs> One of those movies that after you finish watching it, you forgot you even watched it. It was like, oh, where have I been the last hour and a half? Like semi comatose. <laughs> like there were a few things that I liked about it. Um, they play Kiss Me at the end. I like how they handled uh, the lesbian friends because Cameron's friend ended up dating Paget's friend. And I really liked how they handled that. They didn't make that really weird. It was just very natural. Like, yeah, I like her. And they're going to prom together. And I was like, oh, that's cute. They did that well. I like that. I didn't even mention my favorite character who was like someone who literally shows up maybe a total of five to 10 seconds in the movie, the goth chick. She seems cool. Uh, yeah. That's the movie. Again, I do find it a little disingenuous that people are hyping up how bad this movie is. It isn't super bad. If anything, it's just, again, remarkably unremarkable. I feel in no way powerfully in any direction about this movie. I mean, it's better than The Kissing Booth. To be honest with you, I wouldn't even watch it if you aren't either A, a content creator who makes money off of talking shit about bad movies, or I guess I'd watch it if you're a fan of Addison Rae. If you're in either of those things, it, it would benefit you in no way. <laughs> all right, love bugs, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, and some random places that I end up popping up like a bad omen, all of which are Kenny JD. If you have any movies for bad movies in a beat that you think I should check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.